versus the plaintiff, Linda Williams. She says the defendant's her neighbor, and one day his daughter was riding her scooter, and she crashed it into her, injuring her leg. Needless to say, her neighbor, the defendant, has been very uncooperative. She just wants her medical bills paid and has no other choice but to sue for the $2,554.89 she's owed. This is the defendant, Andrew Walker. He says the plaintiff walked right into the path of his daughter who was riding her scooter, and she couldn't stop in time. The accident was 100% the plaintiff's fault. The woman has called the cops on him 12 or 13 times in the past. And this lawsuit, nothing more than a way for her to harass him. He's accused of scooting the issue. All parties, please raise your right hand. Be seated. Come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, ma'am. Linda Williams, you are suing Yolanda Brown and Andrew Walker. You're going to be representing both of you here today? Yes. For $2,554.89 in medical bills and pain and suffering as a result of uh, their daughter running into you yes. with her scooter. Tell me what happened. On June 2nd of 2011, I walked out of my driveway to go to the dumpster, which is across the alley from my home, to put some trash in the dumpster. As I got to the end of the, uh, as I looked to the end of the alley, I saw uh, Tiffany Walker um, at, on a scooter at four years old, um, riding alone on the scooter. A, a regular scooter or an electric scooter? Electric scooter. Okay, she's four? She's five now. So I know, but she was four then? Yes. Okay. Um, I proceeded to put my trash in the dumpster uh, and walk back to my property. Right before I approach my property, I noticed the, the um, Tiffany Walker, uh, she I, flying down the alley. I didn't have a chance to move. Next thing I know, boom, she ran right into my ankle and split my ankle open. Okay. I have uh, my evidence here, my pictures. Uh, split my ankle open. Okay, let's see. Did you go to the hospital? Yes, I did. And what did they do to you at the hospital? I had to get stitches and I had to get uh, a tetanus shot. How many stitches did you get? Um, I think it was a total of six okay. that they gave me. Here's all of the pictures. Do you have the medical records? Yes, I do. I have all of my medical what'd records. What did you do? Well, after she hit your ankle, what did you do? Um, when, once she hit my ankle, I uh, hopped Did that in. knock her off the scooter? No, it did not. She was crying, saying, I'm sorry. Oh. She didn't get knocked off the scooter or anything. She um, said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I uh, hopped in my house. I immediately uh, got on the phone. I called my daughter, who is my witness here today. Mm -hmm. And um, I was crying because I was in a lot of pain. And I told her, asked her if she could come and take me to the hospital. The reason I called my daughter is because she's in the medical field. She advised me to, she would be right there, but to call 911 and to call the paramedic. And that's what I did. The paramedics arrived and so did the uh, police uh, department. They arrived. Uh, when the police got there, he asked me what happened. I told him that there was my neighbor's four-year-old daughter was on a scooter riding unsupervised and she uh, lost control of the scooter and hit me. Uh, the police... The police. Is this a picture of the kind of scooter we're talking about? That, that is one that I took uh, at, at when I went to Walmart just to show. But there is a picture of the actual scooter that I took that he that they had on the bike porch. And I took a picture of it from my yard. OK, go on. Um, so when the police officer arrived, he uh, asked me. Was what your daughter riding that scooter for real? Excuse me? Was your daughter riding that scooter for real? Because she's if she's four years old, how could you have her on a motorized scooter? She's been riding since she was three. She's been riding four wheelers, dirt why bikes, and everything. Have, but why would you have her alone? Was she alone? She wasn't alone. She was, was with my with son. Her? I was I was how in the house. How old's your son? My son's six. But I was, so she was I the was three year old was the four year old was supervised by a six year old? No, I'm just saying she wasn't riding alone. I was there supervising him. So I was in my she, backyard. So why are you telling me that the six year old was supervising? No, I was saying he was there. He was you there and no you were you not. Said, Where were you? I was in my backyard. How, okay, but she's not in your backyard riding. She's in an alleyway riding. So the answer to my question is that the four-year-old was being supervised by a six-year-old. I guess so. I mean, you're lucky she didn't rip her face off in the concrete and take a sp I mean, what is it? you like, she's been riding since she was, so, like you're proud of the, the, this is just irresponsible parenting. 
I mean, as it turns out, it's just, no, no offense, but it's her ankle that got cut. But it could have been your daughter who, like, lost half her body. She could have been seriously injured. Why the, would the you scooter, allow that? The scooter only does 10 miles an hour. Uh, what, how much damage do you think you could do to a four-year-old's face in 10 miles an she hour? She rides her bike faster you? than the scooter. Both of them can ride their bike faster than that scooter goes. Well, I don't think she should be riding her bike alone in an alley at four either. Oh, my God. Welcome back to the People's Court, Harvey Levin here. So, uh, is it too young to put a four-year-old on a motorized scooter? What do you think? Absolutely. Why do you say? Well, if they're being supervised with a six-year-old, I think that's really... But even if they're being supervised by an adult, is it too young to put a kid like that on a, sco on a motorized scooter? Uh, maybe not with an adult present. Um, actually, uh, being a psychology major, I know that the child does not uh, have the correct motor skills to be able to operate um, anything that has a motor on it. Well, you wanted to get that psychology major in really bad, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I can tell you did. Going, ins going inside the courtroom. So uh, the police officer arrived. When he um, came to my home, he asked me what happened. Uh, I told him what happened, uh, that the neighbor's four-year-old daughter was in the alley alone. There was no- How did you first learn that she had been injured? Right after that, right after it happened, they came home and told me. Who's they? The children? Yeah. Okay. And then what did you do? I did nothing. Really? They tell you that they've injured the neighbor and you don't walk over? They to didn't him? tell me they injured the neighbor. They told me that she walked out. In front. They didn't tell me that anything happened. I didn't, I didn't think anything happened. What did your children tell you? They, t they told me that she walked out in front of Tiffany. Drew said he stopped. My son, he stopped on the side and Tiffany tried to turn. But I guess she moved at the same time. And that's why Tiffany that's ran That's not her. enough to get you to go see if the neighbor's okay? We, ha we have problems. I don't, I don't, I don't talk to Tell her. Tell me about I wouldn't, that. Excuse me? Tell me about that. Well, I've been living there two and a half years. My kids are in the motorcycles, four wheelers from day one. Before we moved there, they, we all have everything. So when I moved there, it was always okay at my last address to let them ride in the alley. When I moved there, like the second day, she called the cops. Told him that my kid, well, at that time, my son was riding his dirt bike in the alley. Told, told the cops that my son was riding a dirt bike. From that point to this point, I've had the cops calling me about everything. About what? The kid's continuously riding my, in my, the alley? My, my son's, my, <laughs> over no, and over again, but it's no, your fault for calling the police? It's never, it's, my son, my son has a, has a little friend, six years old. They were riding their bikes up and down the alley. He turned in her driveway and turned around and came back out. She called the cops. Because that happened. Okay. Would you like to see the pictures of her ankle? Apparently something happened, right? I know something happened. I oh. feel like it's her fault. So, oh, but you feel it's her fault? Yes. And it's her fault because she had the temerity to walk to the dumpster, which is what the alley's for? Excuse me? No, she Because I, she had the like nerve to use the alley in the fashion in which it was intended, which is to house the dumpsters and put no, her garbage No, the alley's, out. well, not, not, that's not what I'm saying. I feel like it's her fault for not looking before she walked out into a right of way that's used you by cars. You weren't there. How do you know what happened? Because that's my son. That's my son and my Your daughter. Your son is six. If, Aside if, from if, the fact that he's not here to testify, he's the reason, sick. The reason I'm believing this is because according to her story, she saw my daughter way down the alley. She saw her drive down the alley for no reason, just lose control and crash into her. Yeah. How, I mean, I don't understand how. Why you don't understand how a four year old could lose control of a motorized scooter and run into somebody. And that's the problem. See, that's exactly the problem that you hear that and you say, I don't understand how that could happen. Because if you were an appropriate parent, you could understand how something like that could happen. And you wouldn't allow a six year old to supervise a four year old on motorized scooters in the alley. That's not OK. It's not OK. Show me your medical bills, please. Do you have a scar? Yes, I do. Would you? I yeah, I'd like to see it. What do you want? I'll come down. All right, just hold on. See yeah, I can see it. I think you, you've got your strap right on it. <sighs> Are you out of pocket the fifteen fifty four eighty nine? Did you have to pay that? That is, that is the amount that uh, is in collections right now. Okay. Um, and if I must say, Judge. They are talking about putting a lien on my property. I am a homeowner. 
He's not going to put another lien on your property because he's going to pay you. He's going to pay you. There's a cost to being that free and letting your children roam. We have laws, okay? How many kids do you have? Four. Watch your kids. You owe it to everybody else in the neighborhood, but you also owe it to your kids. I find in favor of the plaintiff in the amount of $2,554.89. Hold on, baby. Well, this is the plaintiff out here first with tears in your eyes. Why? What's going through your mind? What's making you cry? I'm just glad for this to be over. It's been very stressful. Very, very stressful. He lied in the courtroom about so many things. But I must say that justice was done today. And I'm just happy that it's all over. What's causing the tears, though? I'm just happy to get my money so that I can get this, this bill taken care of. Mm -hmm. Because the collection agencies have been calling me when it wasn't even my fault. Mm -hmm. And they was parents that did not take responsibility. We live right next door to each other and they didn't even come over to say, can we give you a nickel? Can we give you $5? Not one thing. So I'm just glad that the judge um, let him have it today. I really am. Okay, right down there. Okay, Father Officer McIntosh. All right, so come on in here and tell me, um, well, you see, you see how overcome she is. What's your feeling about this? I mean, I don't feel like that was my fault. I feel like it was her fault. Not your fault. What about uh, unsupervised kids out there in the alleyway? You're going to still let them yeah, roam I, around I like agree. that? I don't agree with the judge on that. Mm -hmm. My kids been riding for years. I taught them myself. They know everything. They know what they're doing. So she you're not walked out in front of my son, out of my, in front of my daughter. That's what happened. Okay. You're going to still let the kids go out there and ride like Every that? Day. Supervised? You're not going to change a thing? Every day. Okay, Harvey. You know, parental liability uh, varies from state to state, but in this case, there really is no issue. This is gross negligence, leaving the kid under the supervision of a six-year-old. That will do it for this case litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now.